question down here in the front in the green, the microphone. Sir, um, since we're talking about character, I'd like your thoughts about uh, Bonds and Clemens as they approach their eligibility. Oh, that's something for me not to talk about, I think. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, second row, right behind him. Probably in the just answered mine, but I'd like to just know your feelings on Pete Rose. Pete Rose? Yes, sir. Well, Pete right now is on the uh, ineligible list. Uh, there's been some talk about him taking a, another look at it. If you look at his baseball career and statistics, there's no question that, that he should be in the Hall of Fame. So it's, uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but right now he's, he's uh, on the restricted list. And we'll go right here in the middle in the cap. Afternoon, Mr. Killeroo. Uh, my father's name is Harmon, and my son's middle really? name is Harmon. And ah, there's not hi. a lot of Harmons out there. <laughs> and uh, I asked my grandmother one time, you know, why she named my father Harmon, and she said, it, I just like, like the way it rolled off the tongue, you know. But do you have any idea? Did you ever ask your parents why uh, they named why you Why they named me Harmon? Yeah. That was my father's name. I'm a junior, actually. Harmon Clayton Killeroo Sr. was my father. And... Uh, they named me the same thing. I wish I had a shorter name. Next time I come back, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a shorter name. Mel Ott or something like that. <laughs> Our next question up in the back top left, Harmon. Uh, pure baseball question. Was there a pitcher who we would all consider very good, who for some reason you had good fortune against, and was there a picture who we would consider not so good or maybe bad that for some reason to this day you can't figure out how he got you out? Well, I figured out how he got me out. But, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, one picture that, that I had really good luck with, and, and I don't really know why, because the harder he tried to get me out, the better I hit him, it was Raleigh Fingers. And it just, it got to be a joke, in fact, uh, it got so bad that uh, even the players on the, on the A's team uh, told me that when they came in to, to Minnesota and, and landed on the tarmac, they said they looked out the window and, and said, hey, Raleigh, Killebrew left a limo for you. <laughs> I don't know why, because Raleigh was a great pitcher, but I had good luck against him for some reason. The guy that I could not hit was a guy that, uh, first time I saw him, he was... Uh, in an all-star game in San Francisco wearing a Giants uniform. Just a little guy, first pitcher I ever saw take a stretch with nobody on base. And a wind came up when he was pitching that day and blew him off the mound. That's how big he was. Anybody know who he was? Stu Miller. Miller came to Baltimore in the American League. He was there five years. And I think, I think all I ever got off him was two hits in five years. And if I'd had to face him every day, I'd have been back in Payette, Idaho, real fast. <laughs> he's, he was uncanny. His, his motion, he'd throw you his neck and his head and his hip, and, and his arms stayed back. He threw a lot of slow curveballs, and I just, I couldn't hit, I couldn't hit him. I, I tried everything against that guy. I ran up in the box and tried to hit it second, and I'd pull it in the third base coaching box, and, and I hit it flat-footed. I tried everything, and so this one day in Minnesota, I thought, I'm going to try really something very, very scientific, because hitters are scientific, you know. And I said, I'm going to count to three and swing. <laughs> it's a true story. And, and this is about how, how slow Stu Miller uh, <laughs> threw the ball. I, I, I said, I'm going to look for the, the slow curve ball. And when he releases the ball, I'm going to count to three and swing. So he released the ball, and I went, one, <laughs> two. Not out loud, because I didn't want the pitcher or catcher to hear what I was saying, but I went one, two, three, and I swung and I hit a home run. <laughs> true story. Yeah, it's a true story. And, and I only got one more hit off there. I thought, Miller, I got you now, but I couldn't hit him. I, it's terrible. Yes? Question in the top back. Oh, he's right up, up here, here center. Yes. And then we'll close right down here. Hey, how are you today? Good. Mr. Kilbrew. Um, I just want to make a quick comment, and I have a question. Um, since I'm a 13-year-old boy, I've something been about up here. the Yankees. Well, <laughs> yeah, but um, one of my questions was that game the other night. Um, you know, last I'm, night. No, the, the game against Detroit, the tiebreaker. Mm. It was one of the best I've ever seen. Um, 
It really was wasn't a well played game, but it was sure entertaining. That was yeah, a great I guess game one of the most watch. exciting. <laughs> I was there for that one. But um, the comment, I wanted to make one comment, and then I had one, one other little question. Um, okay. I've been coming here since I'm a kid with my father, since I'm 12 years old. And um, the staff here should be commended from Jeff right on down to his staff. I've made friendships here, and I met, I even have friends here from the fantasy camp that hopefully we'll go out and get a drink tonight. All right? Um, and I just want to thank everybody. And I'm, this enabled me to be here today with my nine-year-old daughter. And I have a two-year-old son that'll be coming up here eventually as well. So I just wanted to make that comment. Um, and then my next question, um, if you would play in one of the newer markets, like a warmer market, like maybe Tampa or Miami, do you think people like yourself and maybe a lot of other players would have had a lot more homers because they didn't have full weather to contend with? What, what, did you understand the question? Sure, a lot more homers if you had played in Tampa or Miami, a warmer weather climate, um, if oh. you had hit more homers because of the no fall weather. I don't know. Every time I saw Ted Williams, who grew up in San Diego, he'd tell me, Killebrew, if you grew up in San Diego where I did, you'd have been a better hitter. So <laughs> maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's an advantage, certainly, to be able to play year round, play baseball. But uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, you, you do what you do, and then uh, you can play the what-if game all day, I guess. But, uh, you know, what if? What if I'd have played in Fenway Park, you know? That uh, uh, I was happy to just be in the major leagues and, and to play uh, on a last-place team in Washington and then to move to Minnesota and play those, those years with some great ball clubs. And, um, never really thought too much about the, the final statistics but you know you look back at your career and you say well if I'd have done this or if I'd have done that or if I'd have played somewhere else maybe I'd have done something different but uh, as I look back uh, I, I don't I don't have any regrets I, I'm happy that uh, the way everything uh, worked out thank you then I agree with you the people here at, uh, at in Cooperstown at the Base, baseball Hall of Fame are, are just wonderful. They treat us when we come in. Uh, we couldn't be treated any better from Jeff Idelson, the president of, of the Hall of Fame, right on down to, to Brad and everybody else that works around this joint. They do a tremendous job. We appreciate all they do, too. So I know Marty would say the same thing. And we, we're just happy to give the op get the opportunity to come back here whenever we can. Thank you. And uh, I think we'll close with the last question from one of our original members down here on the front to your left, Harmon. Uh, firstly, what was it like playing for Billy Martin in Minnesota? You say, what was it like? What was it like playing for Billy Martin in Minnesota? And uh, secondly, Jim Cott, when he announced for the Yankees, uh, mentioned that you did not like getting the hit sign with a 3-0 and o count. And if you could just say something about that. What was the last that you didn't like the uh, getting the hit, hit sign, sign on a three on, on a three count. and zero count? Said I did not like three and zero. Jim. No, he probably meant I didn't like the take sign three and zero. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> three and zero pitch. That's a, that should be a pretty good pitch to be swinging on sometimes. No, you I would think, think. I think that's probably what Jim was talking about there. Uh, Speaking of Jim Cott, played with Jim uh, over a lot of years, and we were playing in, in Detroit in Tiger Stadium one day, and, and Jim uh, was pitching, and I was on first base, and Norm Cash was on first, and Jim picked him off first base from here to you, and Norm Cash put the timeout sign on. <laughs> uh, what was it like playing for Billy Martin? Billy Martin uh, probably knew as much about uh, baseball inside the lines as anybody that you'd ever want to be around. I had my best year, the only year that Billy managed for the Minnesota Twins, so I have no regrets in playing for Billy. I learned a lot of stuff. Billy, there's a lot of different ways to manage a ball club, and, and, and Billy managed with fear. <laughs> but uh, he, was, he was not so tough on, on uh, the older players on the ball club, but he was very tough on younger players, trying to make them better players. And uh, one of the things that he always stressed as a manager is the little things that make you a good ball club and don't beat yourself. 
And uh, I think that uh, he won everywhere he went. Uh, it was a great manager. It was the things outside the line that gave Billy uh, uh, problems in life. But I remember uh, one day, it was a windy day in Minnesota, and he, as we were going out on the field, he said, watch the wind now. And I said, Billy, I can't see it. But that's the kind of stuff. He was, he was, he was a great manager, really. Well, if, uh, when you leave Cooperstown today, I challenge you to go home and Google or pull out your Webster's Dictionary off the shelf or go to dictionary.com. Look up the word gentleman. And if there's not a picture of Harmon Killebrew right uh-huh. next to the definition, uh, I would argue and ask for you to write to the uh, source of the definition because there's not a better gentleman in all of baseball than Harmon Killebrew. Let's hear it for the <laughs> Hall of Famer. Thank you. Brad, you're very kind. Thank you very much.